Okay. All right. I wanted to do wanted to do a bit of a decode. Um, I was watching Finnis Temporis, and he did a Home Alone. Um, did some Home Alone symbolism. Um, in a video, and I'll link that um, in the description. But what I want to say is, um, this was this was in his video, and he points out the. I'll just tell you what's going on here. What he points out is that these two um, candlesticks are representing the twin towers. Okay, and he's just getting round ready to eat this meal, right? And what happens is. Just before he's about to eat the, I wish I could find the spot now, and I'll just play just a second of it. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, he's just about to get ready to eat, and the clock goes off, and it's nine o'clock. Okay, so we have the two candlesticks, which are the the twin towers and we have the nine so we have the 9 11 reference all right this was pointed out by finiston porus right and of course he actually blows out those candlesticks those candles okay boom and boom so those two things are extinguished okay so we have the the date the 9 11 reference the extinguishing of the two um candles here there's a lot more in this scene though, okay? And one might think that I've spotted these twin angels here, which I have, <laughs> and I'm thinking, Hoover Dam. You know, I'm thinking these things at the Hoover Dam, the two angels at the Hoover Dam, okay? They look like dog heads, um, but there are two sort of, in a sitting position, angel, okay? Um, with wings up, their arms are the wings. Okay, so they kind of look like Anubis heads, um, but they also are angels. Okay, and this is, I think, this is what they're referred to as winged angels, um, winged figures. Okay, well, <laughs> okay. Um, there's a lot of other things that this could refer to as well, but we're we're just going to stick stick with winged angels because here we go. We've got the two winged angels here and we have one actually in a kind of I don't know if it's a kneeling or sitting position or what it is but this one's definitely lower than this one which is interesting because the whole shot with this system uh, with the system with this clip right is uh, pay attention to it now the whole thing is lopsided right this is not symmetrical because there's something that I'm going to point out here in this clip um this thing over here this chair which is kept in frame okay and again hopefully you've seen my previous video to this one um about the chair symbolism and what that represents now all of a sudden we have that in this clip now all of a sudden we have two winged angels in the clip we even have one on this side which appears to be kneeling or seated i'm not sure but it's definitely lower than this one so this is interesting because we have some references now starting for the Hoover Dam. The chair is the reference for the false throne. It is the reference for the Hoover Dam. Um, and so let's go through some more of the references here. And I'm going to show you another 9-11 reference that's in here as well. Um, but what we've got going on is these candlesticks, they've done well and they've made them the same height though which was nice um we have some stuff going on in the background here as well right we have this sort of green colored plate over here and this is kind of a very very light green i think almost like a a gray um it looks more bowly and this looks more like you would expect the earth to look Okay, so what we have going on here is I believe we have one side representing the metaphysical. With we got the milk over here, the cup of Christ, the vessel that holds and uh, Christ, and we've also got the milk in it. 
the milk is again comes from the holy cow um the milk is is basically a reference for the fiction yeah the same color as the moon right here we go with this looks like the moon here okay so we have this stuff going on and what is actually happening in this scene is that this thing is actually um at a point where it is I don't know, dominant over this thing. I don't know if that makes sense. But this thing looks dominant because it's stood upright and it's almost like we're dealing with being in the fiction at this point. Okay? Being in the false metaphysical. I don't know, I'm trying to explain this um, as best I can. but um, so that's what we've got going on here, and I believe this side is more representative, more representative of the the physical man, okay, who is trapped in the system right now. Yeah, we've got the representation of the the, the dam. We've got the representation of the the world, which is green. As if it's been taken over by the matrix, you know, it's become the matrix. The earth has become the matrix here. And so, and so the angel is um, not in balance with this thing here. Okay. It's become um, controlled by the, the false metaphysical at this point, right? Oh, trying to get all these. There's just a ton of symbolism in here. And so what we have is um, Macaulay is sitting down. Kevin is sitting down. I liked um, Finiston Forces. Um, he picked out the K for Kevin as the 11. Um, but what I want to just add on to that is that Kevin also phonetically sounds very similar to 11. Kevin and 11. Um, it's a bit like in Back to the Future with Calvin Klein. Calvin Klein could almost be Cockney rhyming slang for 11-9. Calvin Klein, 11-9. There could almost be another reference to 9-11 just with the Calvin Klein, Klein phonetic <laughs> um, uh, interpretation. Uh, anyway, getting sidetracked. But, you know, um, so we've got this number 11 again. He's stuck inside the dam at this point. He's sitting down right now to finish his... Um, he's just about to sit down to eat this meal, which is, again, mac and cheese. It's the mac. Okay, the MC. The MC is Mary Christ. Okay, this is why they probably picked mac and cheese for this meal. Um... You know, they could have picked any, any kind of other thing, but they've decided on mac and cheese, and I believe it's just a reference to the mac. There's a ton of mac references in this, uh, with McAllister, <laughs> the Muck Alley, Star, um, in the name, um, even Macaulay's name, Muck Cooley, yeah. Um, so there's a ton of muck references in here. And again, that goes back to Back to the Future as well, with the McFly and the biff landing in the muck yeah he hates the manure the man you are but the the muck is what he doesn't like yeah the mc yeah the big mac he doesn't like the big mac or the big mac <laughs> he doesn't like the big mac yeah and the counterpart to the big mac is the whopper the whopper is the system that we're stuck in that's going to destroy that wants to destroy the Big Mac. I mean, I'm just all over the place with this, <laughs> with this decode here. But you can see how all these things play out, you know. So the Mac here, he's just about to eat this thing, but he gets interrupted with 9/11. Yeah. So he he doesn't get the Mac quite yet. He has to do this little. Um, he has to have this interaction with another set of twins, the the plumbers, the the robbers that are going to come and steal him, steal his possessions, his things, right? 
This is what the system does. It takes your stuff. Um, and this is what he's trying to counteract, yeah? Those those twins, the Bloomin' Mario brothers, yeah? The plumbers, right? Um, and again, there's a ton of... I mean, I'll have to do another video after this one, but, you know, there's they leave the water running, you know, um, as their call sign, you know? So they're called the wet bandits um you know there's a there's a nice little scene where macaulay at the end right when he's finally done all this and i'll put this in another video but when he's finally um waded out of the of the the water and he's coming back out of the, the that thing the stair steps yeah which again is another damn reference the stair step dam um he's finally they finally get a hold of him right at the end there and they hang him up yeah they basically i mean of, of course they're going to find it difficult to do that kind of um hanged i mean it's the hangman symbolism that they they put him up on the hook yeah um they're going to kind of find it difficult to do a crucifixion scene there but that's what's happening yeah He's put up on, um, he's ha hung up, basically. And that's the same thing as what happens to Christ. He's basically hung up, except he's hung up by his arms rather than his neck. Okay, but that's the hanged man symbolism. Um, but that's what happens. And as he goes up those steps, they've got, a, you know, they just have to put the vacuum cleaner just sitting on the side of the wall there. You know, there's just tons of stuff in here. There's tons of... Um, twin angel reference uh, symbolism in here you know there's a ton of stuff um but what's going on i want to do a decode now because i set this up in the last video i want to do this decode of the number that's right here which is the 10 and the 10 okay oh another thing as well with these two things here let's just look at this a minute hang on a minute. here we are look at the green color that's behind him there check this out right he has one plate on this side another plate on this side and who is the one macaulay's the one he's in the middle kevin's the one okay so again we've got this the dollar bill symbolism right here playing out here with this green okay just interesting stuff but anyway i want to go on about this 10 10 that's mirrored here okay because if you watch my last video and I've, I've still got the thing up, I was talking about this being the throne. This is the chair. OK. And so I showed you this. Let me get rid of some of this jazz off of here. Um, because it's going to be way too confusing if I've got a ton of stuff on here. Right. Um, but what I want to show you is here's the 1010. Right. Let me underline it box it or whatever there's our 1010 that is behind um uh kevin right now we get interrupted uh by this thing and these two numbers are basically the same thing so we've got a double reference there this is referencing 911 i believe if you watch my previous uh video what is going on here for people that haven't seen it i guess and just a recap is this 10 11 that is in the dollar bill this is like one of the main folds right so this 10 11 is a super significant date and we have another date that counterparts that which is exactly the same numerology is 10 11 or 11 10 you can say these around if you want to be american you can say it one way around if you want to be english you can say it the other way around but basically what we have is a 10 11 and another 10 11 or an 11.10 and 11.10. Don't matter which way around you put them, right? These two dates are basically the same date, right? Or, or, or symbolizing the same thing. So the day before this date, okay, is 9.11, okay? The day before this date is 9.11. So this makes this 10.10 a reference to 9.11, okay? But there's also a nice little number jump thing that we can do here, okay? We also have, and I'll tell you that in just a second, because we also have the day of the resurrection 
Remembrance Sunday, which is 11-11, and 11 times 11, 11 11 are this day here, the resurrection again, 121. Okay, so now when we're seeing 121 re references, we're thinking this could be an 11 and 11 11 references. These could very well be good references to the idea of resurrection. Anyway, to cut a long story short, Dan, what we've got going on here is if we were to do a number jump from 1010 and we were to use um, a number that is encoded in this day here, okay, this 11, uh, 10, 11 day here, which is 111, which is also happens to be encoded in September the 11th because there is 101 days to finish out the year, to finish out the cycle. So the end of the cycle is 111 away, right? So our reference here with 1010, we can do the same thing. We can finish out that cycle using this 111 of 911 as well. Um, and if we know the next day is also 111 and we're trying to get to this day here, we know we need to add 111 onto our number jump. Okay, I don't know if that's making sense to people, but let's just do it. I've got October the 10th in here. We add 111 and it's taken us to the magic 29th of January. Okay, now this is the date right now that I'm looking at as the Hoover Dam date, but this may not be the day because there are two or three other dates that work in conjunction with this date if you like um, we've got the midpoint um, between this date and another day which is the 20th of march and we also have the 9th of um, may as potential dates which all connect very well to this date so for me to, to for me to say that it's going to happen on this day is a is a bit of a i don't know is it is what it is. It's, there's potential there. Let's leave it at potential. But anyway, um, that's really what I wanted to show you there was that we have this 1010 10 reference, and if we use the 911 reference, which is again referencing 111, because we know that 911 there's 111 days left to finish the year out to finish that cycle, and this is what the idea is. We're finishing out the pie. Um, that's what we've got to add on to this 1010 to get to our date okay funnily enough as this goes on the chair starts to disappear and it disappears right at 9 11. so we know that um right when the 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 donga starts going the the um the uh, clock starts binging okay and again the clock is another reference to the clock tower which is back to the hoover dam being the clock tower in back to the future and the dam has two nice little clock towers on it um, at the hoover dam so again you know <laughs> but um yeah that thing goes out and we have the 9 11 reference and so we've got several 9 11 references in fact let me show you another 9 11 reference that's in here let me show you this one this is pretty cool um, he's just doing his prayer before he's going to eat his final, his last supper as well, which he doesn't get to eat. So remember, that's the last supper before he goes on his little voyage around his house, um, fighting off the bad guys. And of course, there's a ton of other stuff. We have Man on Wire in there. You know, I'll tell you something else that's interesting about the film is right before um, that, I don't know. Anyway. When he's left home alone, they have a um, a power outage, and what actually happens, as they show it in the film, is a transformer blows up. Okay, and again, not saying anything, but there is a coincidental transformer explosion at the Hoover Dam this year. You know, so <laughs> it's just little things like that that are strewn through the film. It's just absolutely nuts. Um, so what I want to say, anyway, let's, let me show you this little 9-11 reference here. 
So he's getting ready to eat. I'll just click through it and you can we'll probably be able to see it. See if you can pick up on it, right? Now what he does is he's got two forks sitting here parallel to one another. Two forks. The two buildings that have forks on the side of them is the twin towers, right? Are the twin towers or was the twin towers. Okay. He picks those two forks up. Okay. He pulls the napkin out from under them. Okay. It's almost like pulling the carpet out from the rug from under your feet. You know, you go toppling when that happens. Kind of reminds me when they, um, back, um, Ghostbusters, where he yanks the tablecloth out from the, from the table. To see if he can leave the, uh, all the um, condiments and glasses and everything else all sitting there. But he doesn't, you know, half of it falls off the table. But this is what we've got going on here, okay? And then he puts the two forks back down, but they're not put down the same, okay? When they go back down on the table, they are kind of just mushed together, kind of wonky, okay? That is a super subtle. I believe 9 9/11 reference there the twin towers coming down reference but most people would just say oh you are reaching there down but you know that's the kind of stuff that I think is just nuts you know they didn't have to put two he could have just had a knife and a fork on here he could have just had a fork he's just you know I mean really yeah that's there to to symbolize something okay so anyway, I've, that's probably it for this this video. I think I'm going to leave it there. So you can see that jump though, okay? And you can see what is happening here is this this is out of balance with this. And before he gets to sit down and eat this meal of of MC of Mary and Christ together, the Mac, he is interrupted by the bad guys, and so he has to go and fend him fend off his home. Yeah, the home is the body. He has to fend off his home. Um, the home is the physical world as well, the true physical world. Nature, that's our true home. That has to be fended off from the the matrix, from the system. Okay, that's what's going on here. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, um, pretty much covered most of it. There is, I mean... I've got a couple of other decodes that I wouldn't mind doing for um, for Home Alone, but I've pretty much talked about most of it there. I mean, there's there's a there's a lot more to it, um, of course. There's there's several scenes that the Twinned Angels pop up in, and other little references to being underwater, um, like uh, snorkeling stuff, and you'll see it for yourself if you watch the the film. But uh, anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Hope you enjoyed. And um, I guess I'll catch you on the next one. All right, cheers. Bye.